Hello and welcome to Serious About Rugby League. I'm Joe Needley. Now in this video, we're back for another edition of the Betfred Championship Team of the Week. Now straight into the team itself, we'll go on to the coach first. This week, I have actually gone for Bradford Bulls' John Keir. Now there were some uh, remarkable results from the Championship, what with Dewsbury getting a good win at Oldham, York and London giving each other a very fierce game, even Featherson and Swinton following through, as well as Lee and Halifax. For the Bradford Bulls, they battled past Sheffield. I think they gave them a serious reality check there. 28 points to nil. You, a lot of you might have seen it on the hour league gap. And I'll tell you something, that really is a testament to Bradford Bulls as well under John Keir. He's always been credited as a super coach and he really is getting some good wins together now. And Sheffield, who would have been buoyed by their, well, their dramatic win over Batley last week, to then go to Bradford and get nilled. It was a, maybe it was a reality check for them, but testament to John Keir. He really can get a side together when it matters, and Bradford, Bulls and Kier come through on this one. On to the fullback position. There are a few contenders for this one. I'll just go back to it. We did have uh, Brandon Pickersgill of Bradford. He scored a try for the Bulls. Matty Marsh on his 100th appearance for York, scoring a brace. Kieran Dixon also performed very strongly in the same game, opposite him for London Broncos. But the one I've gone for is a former Championship Player of the Year in Matt Carella. Carella scored a try in five goals for Toulouse in their 34 points to 14 win over the Batley Bulldogs on Saturday. It helped Toulouse remain top of the championship table. They're looking red hot favourites to, at the very least, contest promotion to the Super League. They've been waiting several years for it now. Maybe this is their time to shine. Who knows? There's plenty more of the season to go. But as long as they keep players like Mark Carella fit, there won't be many teams that can stop them. It's him for me. The wingers this time, maybe two uh, well, two clubs that uh, that rival each other, but maybe, maybe not two players. For Lee Centurions, one of their players is included. It is hat-trick hero Cameron Scott, who they recently got from Hull FC, scoring three tries in their well in their home win over Halifax on Sunday at the Lee Sports Village. However, it may scrap however scrappy it may have been, he scored three of Lee's five tries in the game. Deserving of his rewards, he's always been a good finisher, a good, strong, solid young player there. And that's why Cameron Scott has been named. Joining him is uh, Ben Blackmore from the Featherstone Rovers. Blackmore performed somewhat strongly for Rovers uh, on Sunday in, in their hard-fought win over the Swinton Lions. Another try scorer as well. He's always been a workhorse there. Deserving of his spot and plenty more tries hopefully for Featherstone to come from him this season. A very good asset to have in this league as well. Centres, speaking of Featherston, will stay on. Will stay focused on them, as uh, Lurney from Toronto, Greg Worthington is named in the sad. Okay, wherever he's from, he's currently having his dues at Featherston, and he scored four tries for them in their win over Swinton Lions. So he can hardly be ignored. Let's face it. Joining him is uh, London's Guy Armitage. Now Armitage, he had a good, strong, solid game for the Broncos at York, scoring a try. It was a rather fancy one as well after Teo Agoda managed to get the sneaking offload to him. But uh, yeah, I mean, Armitage, he, he, he was very solid as well. He, he helped keep York at bay. <coughs> Sorry about that. It was enough to keep uh, York from completing their comeback completely. They were unable to replicate what they did in the Challenge Cup there. Armitage was a big part of that and that's why I've gone for him. Standoff, I'll just go back to the uh, contenders for this one. There was a few at standoff here. Corey Aston had a strong game for London. <coughs> Paul Sykes had a very good game as well for Dewsbury. I mean, kicking seven, kicking four out of four goals there at Oldham, as did Ben Reynolds and Louis Dufray. But it's points machine and rotating from his usual position of fullback. I've gone for Jack Owens on this one for the Witness Vikings. Widnes got a very big and strong win over Cumbrian's Whitehaven, 40 points to 16 on Sunday. It was a much-needed win for Widnes, I would say, because, I mean, at home, very sim very recently, they did not fare so well in a heavy defeat against the London Broncos. But, I mean, they really want to challenge for the playoffs this year to Widnes, and that was a, they got themselves a good win in Jack Owens. Scoring a try in six goals was a key part of that. That's why he's in. Completing the back line is um, to lose is uh, Stan Robin, if that's how you pronounce it, just saying. Stan Robin was one of their try scorers uh, in France over there, but he's always been a big part of Toulouse's uh, well devastating attack of times. And uh, even though Batley showed a lot of brave resistance, 
Robin was one of the players who helped break them down alongside Jonathan Ford and Will Bartow. Therefore, deserving of a place in the side. He's always been tricky and speedy with ball in hand as well as his kicking game. And against Batley, it was no difference. I'm going to go with Stan Robin on this one. Now, the prop forwards. This may seem like an unusual combination. It's why I ended up on the losing side. I've gone for York's Jack Teenby for this one. I mean, he was very solid and a key part in York almost completing a memorable fight back over London. Joining him is try scorer for the Dewsbury Rams, Connor Scott. Now, Scott... OK, he rotated in the forwards, but I mean, he played like a prop for Dewsbury against all. They're always carrying, the ball, carrying in the ball hard, even managing a try for his efforts. He helped keep Dewsbury's forward pack solid against Oldham, helping them just restrict Oldham to just six points scored down at Bowerfold. Dewsbury performing strongly yet again as a unit, and Connor Scott was one of the key men there. That's why he's been named. But Hooker, now, very tricky one. Yeah, again, I'll refer back to... Um, my contenders, Reese Butterworth, who came off the bench for York, did well, as did opposite number Matty Fozard. I mentioned Will Bartow earlier, he was solid for Toulouse. But edging them all was try scorer for Lee, was Liam Hood. Liam Hood's always been a tricky player from acting half, whether he can uh, try and pinch efforts himself from there, or his quick speed from the ruck, even his defence as well. This is it, he kept Lee on top and he's keeping them unbeaten as well. They had to fight hard, even with 12 men, funnily enough, they were reduced to after Jared's, Jared Samet's red card there for a quite a bad spear tackle, but that's not the subject of the minute. Liam Hoddy helped keep Lee strong, prevented Halifax from completing a comeback and helped keep Lee, keep Lee unbeaten and contesting promotions back to the Super League. It's Liam Hood in there for me. Second rows, now this is quite a rarity here. We've got two second rows who, funnily enough, both scored two tries apiece, albeit in different games. First up is Bradford Bulls, he's Brad Gallagher. He scored two of their five tries in the win over the Sheffield Eagles. One of their up-and-coming uh, players through their very strong academy setup somewhat is Gallagher. I mean, uh, yeah, again, he was no different. I mean, and he's, he's another one. I mean, he's he's... At the minute, he's helping keep Bradford very competitive at the moment. They're still a very tricky side to beat, no matter what troubles they may be going through. That's why he's been named. He's a good, solid player, a good young player as well. That's why he's been named. Joining him is a more experienced one. He's had his time at Toulouse. He's now at London. Is Reese Curran. Now, Curran scored two tries. Well, in sorry, let me get this straight. He scored two tries in the win at York. He helped take him into an 18-0 lead there. It proved to be just unassa too unassailable for the Broncos. And Curran has always been a strong, solid player. Very difficult to put down. His support player, as well as, uh, as well as his ability to drive the ball in, has been fantastic. He's still got a few years left in this game, so Reese Curran, I've gone for him. Completing the lineup is his uh, former teammate at Toulouse, James Bell. Now, on to the contenders. Four loose forward there. Eddie Batty had a good game for London. Danny added for Lee and James Harrison for Featherstone, but James Bell just edges it. Toulouse, they're really playing as a unit now. That's why, I mean, even though they've played more games than others, that is why they're really, they really are remaining solid as a team. I mean, five wins from five, it really doesn't, it really should not be ignored. And Toulouse, at the moment, maybe they are looking like the team to beat. Who knows? They might face, they might, it might be difficult for them when they face trickier opposition later in the season, but that is to come. And James Bell's always been a very good player for them. I've gone for him. That concludes the Betfred Championship uh, Team of the Week uh, for round five, funnily enough. So uh, let us know what you think in the comments section. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. I'm Joe Needley and thank you for watching.